Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Boost! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm the YouTube airbender. I'm YouTube famous now. Available summer 2023, the album, Dad. Shimmy Shimmy AF. <clears throat> Rock on gold dust woman. Boost! For all of you out there that say that my intro is so annoying, it was literally 29 seconds. <laughs> Just so you know, okay? I don't want to lose you 29 seconds of your life, all right? Here, there's a hair on my hat. I actually was going to make a Jaclyn Hill video today. <laughs> there really is a hair on my hat. I can't get it off. I don't know if it's from those fuzzy lipsticks or what. Um, what did I say? Oh, I was going to make a Jaclyn Hill video today. Actually, I wasn't going to make any videos today um, because my husband is getting back from, he is getting ready to land any moment now, um, and then he is going to stop by Chipotle because he's really hungry. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to stop by Chipotle because I've got to have something to eat, and then I've got to sleep because he stayed up late last night before he flew back very early this morning. He was on a work trip um, in San Diego this weekend and had a blast and got to see my brother-in-law and my very soon-to-be sister-in-law and things like that. And Boo Radley and I hung out here and we had a Boo Radley and Peter's Bachelor weekend. And um, so I was going to actually just take the whole day off and catch up on Fear the Walking Dead videos, videos, Fear the Walking Dead episodes and um, welcome my husband home and all that kind of stuff. But I was like, you know what, I've got to... A while before he comes home, so why not make a video about, do you like my fan in commemoration of James Charles? Um, why not make a uh, James Charles video today? Now, I do want to make two comments about my video from yesterday. Um, first of all, there were so many people that commented on my video and said, Peter, I know that you don't like to cover deep, dark topics and things like that, but, um, your voice is really important, and what you said was really important, and on and on and on. And I just want to say I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because I, I think, as many of you know, um, I'm a person in recovery. I've been sober for 28 and a half years, and I have very serious conversations, you know, with my friends and, and people in my life on a, a daily basis. It's not like I'm afraid to have serious conversations and um, I like to share my point of view and hear other people's points of view and things like that. Um, it's just like in videos, because I feel like the people that are attracted to watching my videos um, like to get, have an escape, you know, at the end of their day or something to laugh about. I mean, you know, I get so many people that comment on my videos and say, oh, like my husband and I, we, we lay in bed at night watching your videos before we go to bed. Y'all should be doing something else, first of all, before you go to bed. No, I'm joking. But anyway, they'll say, like, we lay in bed and we watch your videos and we just laugh and all this kind of stuff, you know, or people will say, you know, you've gotten me through a really hard time, you know, going through this or going through that. It just really means so much to me. And so that is why it's important for me to continue to flip fans and make jokes and be funny haha in videos and things like that. That being said, I, I do think it is important to cover, to cover those more serious topics and to talk about it, if not for the only reason of continuing the conversation, okay? And um, having the conversation go on. And, and you know, I think often, you know, like I, I said yesterday in my video that I didn't really know what to say about Swoop's video. Um, so if you if you haven't watched uh, Swoop's three-part series so far, she's going to be adding to that about her coverage of Colleen Ballinger. Please go watch it. It's fantastically done. Um, but, you know, like, if, if people hadn't brought it to my attention, I wouldn't know to watch it. And I said in my video yesterday that I really didn't know what to say because I felt like she had said everything that needed to be said, which I totally agree with. But sometimes part of the reason why I will uh, mention videos that I've covered and things like that um, is because I want to bring attention to you or that, that these videos are out there or that these statements have been made and things like that because if somebody hadn't brought that attention to me, I wouldn't know about it, right? And so I feel well, partly it's my responsibility to get in videos and talk about it. It's not just like I think that I have to have an ultimate opinion about it or something like that. It's really that I'm kind of, to be honest with you, marketing. I know I don't get paid for it, but for other people's videos to talk about those things and what, because I think it's important that their videos are shared. You know, I think it's important that Swoop's videos are watched and heard and that everybody knows all the information that's out there, you know? Um, I think it's important that Adam McIntyre's videos are watched and, you know, other people that have been covering this. Um, the, the whole Colleen Ballinger situation with all the allegations because 
there are a lot of people that watch YouTube videos, but they don't have, they don't follow on Twitter or they don't watch Instagram. And so th they only see bits and pieces, right? So it's important. And, and that is why I have believed for a very long time. And I talked about this in a video the other day. And, and a lot of people just kind of were like, this is why I began to watch drama videos. And I was like, thank you. So the, the people understand, right? Is that, um, you know, from the very beginning, it was, yes, to be funny and, and you know, pop a fan and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, it was to bring awareness to the consumer about what is going on so that you guys could ultimately make decisions about whose pockets you want to line with money, you know, based on their behavior on Twitter or their behavior and, in, in, you know, on Instagram or things that they're doing behind the scenes, not just what you're seeing in one isolated YouTube video where they're launching a product, right? And I think that that's important. And those are often the things that people don't um, want us to talk about. I can't tell you how many, you know, influencers I've had that have come to me and said, like, you, you're, you do realize by talking about my products or talking about things that are going on in my life and things I've done, like, you're costing me money, right? And I'm like, I'm not costing you any money at all. Like, that's not my responsibility. Do not put that on my shoulders, right? Like, I am just sharing what you are doing and the people are going to vote the way that they want to vote. So, if you don't want your behaviors to affect your almighty dollar, and yes, I have I've had more than a few people say that to me, okay, that have been very upset with some specific videos that I have made where I'm calling out horrific behaviors of theirs. And they're like, you do realize that I have a launch next week. And I'm like, yeah, the timing's horrible for you. I'm sorry that you behaved in this inappropriate manner that's going to affect your launch, right? That all you really care about is, is the dollar. And um, Jeffree Star is somebody that has come to me and said that in the past, years ago. Um, but, you know, it, 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 for me, it's important that you guys have all the facts. So it's always interesting to me when drama channels are painted in this really horrible light and we get all this negativity, when in reality, all we're really doing is bringing factual evidence to you guys. Well, the majority of us, I mean, I, if I get something wrong, I try to correct myself. I think I've proven that, you know, um, but I try to bring the factual evidence to you guys so that you can ultimately make the decision over what you want to do and who you you want to continue to watch, right? And you're going to watch who you want to watch. I mean, if you are a dying fan of somebody, no matter what I say in a video, you're going to continue to watch that person. That's just the truth, right? So, but I, it's just, it's important for me to share the facts with you. The reason why I share my opinion, and if you've watched my videos for a while, you know that there was a long time where I did not share my opinion, and I kind of rode the, took, you know, the middle road on things, and I just shared the facts, right? Um, the reason why I went back to sharing my opinion about things was because so many people asked me what my opinion was about things. And so I thought, you know what, this is my channel. I'm not going to make any jokes about it, but this is my channel. And if I want to share my opinion and people don't agree with it and people get very upset about it, then they can start their channel and they can share their opinion or they can tweet it out or they can put it in the comment sections of my videos. That's fine, right? But this is my channel and I'm going to share my opinion. I have a right to do that. I'm not going to be afraid of sharing my opinion because I might piss off a super fan. I'm not going to do that, right? But I just want to say thank you for all of you out there um, that like really said that you appreciated my voice in this whole conversation and that, um, you know, that you appreciated my support of, of, of the actual victims. I don't know anybody that wouldn't actually, I mean, I don't, I don't need pats on the back for that. I, I think everybody should be supporting these victims, right? I, I, I think this is a, a strong question of what, where do we stand on the right side of things, you know? And, and for me, it's a very easy question, you know? Um, and so I, I just want to say, I appreciate that. And for those of you out there that were like, I really like this serious side of Peter and, you know, where he's really thinking things through logically and giving us like a very thoughtful, you know, uh, presentation of, of his ideas and things like that. I just want you to know, I do have five other channels, okay? And on my vlog channel, I am pretty serious over there on a daily basis. I mean, I talk about TV shows and stuff like that, but I also do share serious stories in my life on my Peterisms channel. I read, you know, daily affirmation books and I share about lessons that I've learned in my life, whether it's about recovery and addiction or whether it's about grief and loss. Um, or toxicity in our lives or removing chaos and toxicity from our lives. I talk about a lot of serious topics over there. And on my Peter Does Stuff channel lately, I've talked about, you know, 
self-hatred of being gay when I was younger. I've talked about my OCD. I've talked about a very a varying, uh, you know, issues of serious topics over there. So this is not the only channel that you can find me on talking about serious topics if that's something that you enjoy. Um, and today's topic is, it's, I think it's important to bring to the consumer, to you guys, this knowledge. Um, but I don't think it's as serious as what I was talking about yesterday. So I want to say that. The second thing I want to say is, um, for the several people that have tagged me in some tweets and tagged other drama channels and, um, the people that wanted to comment on my video yesterday, a few people, and say some things about the fact that, um, and you know, somebody the other day said something to me about, like, me talking about comments on my videos and addressing negative comments and things like that, and they said that it was kind of a little bit like, um, me coming for Jacqueline Hill and saying that she's always, you know, talking about negativity and the negative, girl, listen, okay? Uh, uh I mean, I've had a couple people that have said that to me in the last, you know, couple months and have said, this standing up for yourself era is great, but, like, you're becoming a little bit like Jaclyn Hill and with being, no, I, I, I'm not talking about people bullying me. I mean, I've been harassed and stalked. That's on a whole other level, okay? We're, I'm not talking about that. When I'm talking about comments in a video and I'm reading a comment and responding to it, in fact, that video that people said that about, I even said in that video, you gave me a topic for a video. That was why I was addressing that one comment, right? Okay. Not to mention that many times why I read comments or I address them in videos is to either clarify myself and to make a clearer stance on something or to correct myself, which I think is important at times, or to have a further conversation about something that maybe I didn't catch in the previous video, you know, that maybe I kind of just like briefly talked about it. So somebody will comment something and I'll read their comment, right? I mean, I can't help if that comment doesn't sound very nice. <laughs> That's not my fault. Okay, y'all are the ones leaving the comments. But I feel like it's a completely different thing than Jaclyn Hill. Not to mention, in that same video where a couple people said to me, like, oh, you're coming across kind of like Jaclyn Hill. I said in there that you guys give me the freedom to liberate myself and to sing Annie songs and to be too much and to live out, out loud on a daily basis. And I'm so thankful for all of you. I mean... Y'all, I mean, I, I don't know if you watch Jaclyn Hill as closely as I do, but when she's coming for everybody saying that she's the biggest victim in the world and she's bullying people, I don't hear a lot of gratitude in that statement as well. I, I, I could be wrong, okay? Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't hear a lot of gratitude in that statement. So, um, but that's never my intention of talking about those comments. My intention is to either clarify something, correct something, or have a further conversation about it. The three C's. No, I'm not talking about the three C's of al -Anon, but um, the three C's of uh, correcting myself, clarifying myself, or having a further conversation. So I just want to make that clear. Um, for people that um, continue to want to tag me in this stuff or comment that I should have done my own investigations, we didn't need, they tagged a bunch of drama channels I saw on it too, we didn't need to wait until Swoop to come out with her investigation and, and why are we singing Swoop's praises and all this kind of stuff. We're singing Swoop's praises because Swoop deserves to have her praises sang, okay? She did absolutely intensive investigation, gave this man tons of chances to get honest with her and he lied right to her face, okay, while discrediting actual victims and minimizing victims further than that, okay, of several different kinds of abuse. She did a phenomenal job of handling it with grace, and I just was super impressed with it. So that's the first reason why Swoop needs to have her video shouted out, number one. Number two, I don't know, this is where it kind of like pisses me off when people want to pick and choose what they hear in my videos, or they don't watch my videos at all, and they want to make a comment about it. If I did that, if I said, I didn't watch a video, but I'm going to give you a 30-minute dissertation on what I thought about it, y'all would go crazy, Okay. If I, if I get in a video and say I watched it at two times speed, people are like, you needed to watch it at one time speed because you didn't hear this. You missed this one second clip, right? Well, I said in my video yesterday, I apologized to Josh David Evans, and I said I should have done my own in investigation. I should have found my own research. I said that in my video yesterday. So y'all don't need to be tagging me in that shit no more, okay? That's a crock of BS. You don't need to be tagging me in that stuff anymore. I said that in my video. I took full responsibility for the fact that I was not aware of that until Swoop came out with her video and that I should have done my... You can go back and fact check it in my video. I know I said that because I watched my video back. So anyway, today we're going to talk about at the... Uh, where's Peter Mon's timestamp at channel or Sally Joe's timestamp at 14 minutes and 22 seconds. And all of that was part of the video. Those were all things that I needed to say. So don't say that that was in the intro and the drama starts at 14 minutes and 30 seconds, okay? If y'all are just here for the James Charles stuff, well, here we go. Okay, so the James Charles launch, and I'm going to talk about a celebrity supporting James Charles. I'm going to talk about a, a makeup uh, 
uh, gu guru, OG makeup guru on YouTube that has found, thank you, that has some integrity, that is not willing to review James Charles' makeup and has made that very, very clear. And I'm also going to talk about um, some findings with the FDA uh, per, per Kevin James Bennett that Kevin James Bennett talked about on Instagram that is big no-nos of James Charles. So I'm going to talk about all of that today. But first I want to talk about... Um, the fact that Kim Kardashian, and, and I, I've looked everywhere to find the exact TikTok and things like that, but I'm just going to show you from the Beauty Guru chatter over on Reddit, which they cover all kinds of things that have to do with makeup, makeup releases and whatever, and, and they're very, very fair over there. I mean, they have strict moderators, okay? Like, you cannot be coming and trashing these people unless you, like, have some basis for why you're doing it, Okay. So I'm just going to tell you that right now. I mean, like, when you go through here, I mean, it's like people looking for a, a UK guru. They're talking about new releases. They're, I mean, it's, it's, it's all to do with makeup, okay? It's not about trashing people. I want to make that very, very clear. The beauty guru... Uh, uh, chatter Reddit on the the Reddit thread is is mostly about beauty and makeup. It's not really about trashing people and things like that. Okay, so they put somebody put over here Kimberly Kardashian, which I love that they said Kimberly. <laughs> is that her Christian name, girl? <laughs> Kimberly Car is that her stage name? I almost said One Night in Paris, but that was Paris Hilton's movie. What was Kim Kardashian's? Uh, oh, here's my favorite neighbors in the entire world. Hi, she's waving. She ain't even looking over here. She's wa Hey! It is too hot. It's like 94 today. I think so, yeah. It's hot. I know. Heat advisory. And you know what? It's a good day for vegetarian chili. I'm going to say that to y'all every single day until you have it. <laughs> well, she is. And I am. <laughs> Have a nice walk. Won't you be my, won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> Did y'all love that quote yesterday um, from Mr. Rogers that I used in my uh, video? I love that quote so much. That quote has stuck with me the last 24 hours. And so many people loved the quote that I used from Fargo yesterday. I just want to say, oh, look at this little picture of Boo Radley that I sent to his dad last night because he was missing him. And he's so sweet. Anyway, I love this quote so much. Where is it at? Uh, Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers said, fame is a four letter word like tape or zoom or face. What ultimately matters is what we do with it. And I love that quote so much. Um, I think it's such a powerful quote, you know, and that all these people that have all this power and fame, it's like what they choose to do with it is up to them. Right? So anyway, Kimberly Kardashian, I don't remember what her, her, her point, like I, I love my husband loves the Kardashians. Okay. I mean, he doesn't love them, but he watches them and he has lots of opinions. But I think he probably does love them. I think he does. You know, and I've watched them here and there, and I kind of know what's going on with all of them and all that kind of stuff, you know, like. But, you know, what's interesting to me, <laughs> here's just my opinion about it, okay? Here's what's interesting to me is, you know, like, uh, Kourtney Kardashian is, like, remarried and things like that. And Scott Disick, like, they like Scott Disick more than they like Car Kourtney Kardashian. They have absolutely boogered that girl. They are so mean to Kourtney. This is when I stopped watching it, okay? They are so mean to Kourtney Kardashian and that, like, literally Kris Jenner lets Scott Disick sit on her lap. Like, Scott Disick is, like, they don't ever talk about Rob, right? Like, Scott Disick is, like, the son that Kris Jenner wishes she had had, okay? She don't, she don't claim, I mean, you never hear about Rob's baby and none of that stuff stuff in that show. Never. None of it. Do you? So anyway, um, Kimberly Kardashian. And can somebody explain to me why uh, they, and I've asked my husband this a, a billion times. He's like, it has to do with production. That's what he always says to me. It has to do with production. Can you explain to me why they took Keeping Up with the Kardashians and they moved channels and they call it the Kardashians and it's literally the exact same show with a different trailer at the beginning of it. It's the exact same show. I'm very confused by this, okay? It's the exact same show. Do they get a better deal on a different uh, network or something? Or is it on the same network? I don't know. I don't know nothing about it because I think these people are vapid, okay? I think that they are, that they got no depth to them whatsoever and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, Kimberly Kardashian, she came out and she was promoting Predator Paints, okay? And that's James Charles' new painted. And here's the picture of it right here. I'm not going to be throwing up a bunch of thumbnails today. And this person said, Kimberly Kardashian supported painted and James Charles, okay? And so she apparently put this up on her Instagram story and things like that. 
like that, people are going crazy. Now, I saw this a couple days ago. There was like a TikTok about it or Instagram live story that she put up about the Predator paint. She's so excited about this. I, I just can't stop calling it that, right? She's so excited about having this Predator paint up on her face and things like that, you know? And all these people in here are speculating that James Charles paid uh, Kimberly Kardashian. I wonder if she's going to uh, if she's going to promote a Kaclyn Kardashian Hills a new highlighter. That she, you think she will? Probably not. Jacqueline don't want to pay the Kardashians that much. She just wants to be a Kardashian. But anyway, all these people are speculating that James Charles um, paid Kimberly Kardashian. <laughs> I can't stop calling her Kimberly Kardashian. That he paid Kimberly Kardashian to promote this. Now I don't know if that's true, and I don't know how all that stuff works behind the scenes. You know, she's very close with that makeup by Mario. Maybe makeup by Mario said you should promote this Predator paint. I, I don't know why he would want to do that. Whatever. Here's that car that sounds like a boat again, my lord. Don't it sound like Jaws every day in my neighborhood? I swear it does. But anyway, um, I don't know why a makeup by Mario would want to promote this Predator paint. But it's so, it's so, to be honest with you, it's, I was going to say baffling. It's, it's very troublesome to me, honestly. With all of this that's going on right now with Colleen Ballinger and these allegations and people taking this very seriously. And then James Charles, who is a self-proclaimed Predator. You know, I feel like I've said this in enough videos. And people are like, you know what? It's not that deep. It's not that deep that James Charles is a Predator. That J it's, it's really not that deep that James Charles was talking to minors and DMs and having sexual conversations with him. You don't think that that's deep? If that happened in your neighborhood, if that happened with your school, your kid's school, if that happened to your child, you don't think that that's deep? You wouldn't think that that's a deep issue? Are, are, you, are you kidding me? Okay, that's what kills me, first of all, is these people that want to prote protect James Charles and his predator paint, okay? But what kills me even more is all these people like Michaela Nagara and uh, Patrick Starr, Laura Lee, Daniel Prada, Manny MUA, all these people that continue to support this and endorse James Charles, okay? Like, I mean, for, uh, way past him ever returning any kind of favor to them in return, it's like, do y'all not have any morals or integrity whatsoever, can you not stand on the right side of history, seriously? And this is why this person still has a... I mean, when you go through... When James Charles posts something, okay, on his own Instagram, it is literally flooded with negative comments. The people say, I'm not buying this crap. This is Predator paint, things like that. Of which it all sold out already, right? Because he probably didn't buy that many units. But he wanted to make it look like he sold out on his first brand, you know? Which I was having this thought the other day, and I was like, you know, it's real interesting that he has, like, doubled down on these paints and said that they're the most original idea in the entire world. And he continues to push these paints, and this has been his idea for years and years and years, right? When we now know that there have been 15 to 20 other brands that have done this for the last 10 to 15 years, okay? He's not new. Like, MAC Cosmetics came out with this years ago. You know, House, Cos or House Labs came out with this just last year, things like that, right? So James Charles is not the first one that's come out with these paints, okay? But I was sitting there, and I was thinking about it, and I'm not... I'm, I'm sure a million people out there have already thought about this, but I was like, why did he come up with these paints, right? Like, why these paints? Why was this the thing that he was going to, like, stand behind and say, everybody has to have these paints, and this is the most original idea and all this kind of stuff? And I was like, why wouldn't he just come out with, like, a palette or something? Like, you know, he could release, like, a palette, and, oh, we can't release a palette. That couldn't be James Charles' first release back. Because James Charles already released the only palette that you ever need to have. He released that Morphe James Charles palette. And do you remember at that time, that release your inner artist, he said that this is the only palette that you're ever going to need in your entire life. It has everything that you're ever... So he can't release a palette. So he had to come up with something completely different, which meant it was going to be skincare or a perfume or cologne. I don't know why these people, I mean, this is what's so interesting to me is that they, all of them, need to always be coming out with some kind of makeup. You know what I mean? Like, this is what is so crazy to me. Like, how many influencers do you know besides uh, the, uh, those, uh, tw those twins? What are their names? I don't remember what their names are, but anyway, uh, the, the, why can't I think of their names? The the Doan twins, or why can't I think of their names? Anyway, those guys, they were friends with James Charles and uh, Emma Chamberlain and all that kind of, why can't I not think of the, their names? Anyway, somebody put it in the comment section below. Uh, but anyway, they've left YouTube and all that kind of stuff, but they came out with cologne, remember that? Well, that's probably, no, you know, that's probably because a lot of people, 
think that James Charles might have been a little inappropriate with those twins, or one of those twins, and uh, that's probably why he didn't want to do a clone or something, because I was going to say, if James Charles came out with, a, like, a unisex scent, like, that would sell, like, hotcakes to his people, right? Like, those Paris Hilton and Britney Spears and all J-Lo and those perfumes and things like that, like, those are, like, big sellers, right? So if James Charles came out with, like, a unisex scent, you think that would do really well, but no, that's why he, why can't I not think of their names? That's going to drive me qu crazy. Hold on a second. I got to look it up. Why can I not think of their names? Twins. <laughs> the, the, what? Oh, my God. Am I going to have to really Google twins on YouTube? And you know it's going to come up with... It's like something with the... Why can't I not think of it? This is what happens when you start getting older and people want to know why I can't get my story straight. My twin brother was... What? Oh my lord, there's some horrible stuff out there about... Okay, wait. Twin... Who are the famous twins on YouTube? The Dolan Twins! The Dolan Twins! How could I ever forget the Dolan Twins? Okay. So you know them Dolan Twins, right? And they came out with Cologne, I believe, a couple years ago. That's probably why James Charles... He didn't, he didn't want people being like, oh, the Dolan Twins came out with something. <laughs> something else you're trying to steal from the Dolan Twins. Okay. But anyway, so he couldn't come out with this palette, so he had to come out with this painting thing. Well, then he's got, you know, Kim Kardashian and all these other people, and they're supporting a Predator. They're supporting Predator paint. You guys don't take issue with this. Like, I don't know why you all don't take issue with this. And you're like, well, I don't really care. I'm going to continue to support these people for, for whatever. Well, you supporting Manny, who supports a predator, is indirectly supporting a predator. I just want to make that very, very clear to you. Now, you want to continue to support Manny and indirectly support a predator? You support a predator all day long. Personally, I can't do it. Okay? I can't. And, uh, yeah, so... That's where it's at with me. But anyway, so Kim, Kimberly Kardashian, she came out and she supported these Predator paints, right? Then um, uh, Kathleen Light, she came out. This is all up on the Beauty Guru Reddit. You can go over here. And, oh, oh, wait, what's all that? Oh, wait, it's going on. Oh, my, my iTunes is playing. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Why my music start playing? I was trying to get into the Reddit thread. Okay. So that's the first thing. Then it comes out and they put this post up here. And here it is. It's Kathleen Light's. And Kathleen Lights came out, and she clarifies there's no way she's reviewing this painted. And she says in this little clip that people are asking her to review the Predator paints. And she's do y'all love that I just say it like it's the name? He really should have come out with that. I mean, honestly, since he's not afraid to hide from the fact that that he's a Predator. I mean, he's said it in videos, and he doesn't hide from it. And he even said it again in this article that came out in Cosmopolitan that he was still asking people for their IDs and DMs, even though he wants to date a much older man that he said in his, his own video, in his own words, he said that, that he's always wanted to date somebody older. All right. Um, but then he said on Logan Paul's podcast that he wanted to date somebody that looked as young as possible. That, those, you know when you say that two things can be true at the same time? Those two things, two things can't be true at the same time. Okay? James Charles is a liar. He is a... James Charles... You know what? Let me just... I want to show you something right now. <laughs> I want to show you a clip that I, I should probably not show this because I'll probably, my, my video will probably get demonetized for this. Hold on just a second. Where can I, where is this? I want to show y'all this. This is my favorite clip that I send to all of my friends when they say wrong, wrong stuff to me. And I'm like, y'all are wrong for this. Okay, you're not going to say, you are a liar. I've got all these clips of Michaela Nagara and James Charles and all these fools up in here. Where is this clip? Oh, here it is. This is my favorite clip of life. My fa <laughs> Trust me, my friend Tawny Jean, she has gotten this video sent to her about 15 times. Here you go. You ready? You are a liar. Okay. 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 You go, Miss Marlo Hap Hampton. I love her so much. You are a liar. A liar. Okay. James Charles is a liar. He can't keep his lies straight. But anyway, Kathleen White, she came out and she said she ain't going to review that Predator paint. No, ma'am. Okay. She said she people have been asking her to do it and she ain't going to do it. Good for her. Applause for Kathleen Light on that. Okay. Now let's get into... Now this is going to stop here in about a minute. So hold on a second. Okay. So uh, hold on a second. Who is texting me? People could be texting me. Uh, oh, my husband. He is landing here in 23 minutes. He just texted me. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So let's uh, get into this Kevin James Bennett thing. So Kevin James Bennett, he posted... And I'm not going to throw these up here either. But he throws to these things about the FDA, FDA guidelines... Okay, and he put over, he, he circled and highlighted certain things and FDA and all these kind of things, right? Okay, so I'm just showing you that for proof. You can go over to Kevin James Bennett Instagram. His Instagram is KJ Bennett Beauty. Okay, so I'm gonna read you this, it's very long. 
He says, does James Charles have a few million dollars lying around that he doesn't need? Because the FDA, and he tagged the FDA in this, okay, is not going to be pleased with his painted company BS. Huda Beauty paid nearly $2 million to settle a two-year class action lawsuit by consumers over her brand using illegal colorants in its Neon Obsessions palettes. The lawsuit stated that the palettes contained pigments the U.S. Food and Drug Administration had not approved for use near the eye. Instead of warning consumers, the product had a hidden disclaimer underneath another label, stating the makeup was not intended for use around the eyes. Guess what? James Charles and Prisha Cosmetics, the manufacturer, decided to say F you to the FDA and have not only created cosmetic paints using colorants not approved by the FDA for use around the eye, the website offers instructions on how to use the unapproved colorants as an eyeshadow. Guess what else? I don't know why, because didn't he put out the, the only eyeshadow palette you would ever need in the entire world? Okay, but that's problematic. Because it's not approved by the FDA to use around your eyes, and they're using the example, explain how to use it as an eyeshadow. Guess what else? There's no disclaimer on the painted website to alert consumers. There goes that boat again. There's no, guess what else? There's no disclaimer on the painted website to alert consumers that these colors are not safe to use around the eye. Go catch Jaws! Instead, they feature two images of the unapproved colorants used around the eye. Not surprising, I mentioned the manufacturer's questionable reputation in a previous post. Multiple lawsuits have been filed against them, which are in the public domain. Now, James Charles is going to end up blaming this on his lab, and I'm going to say, listen, sister, okay? Bye, sister. I'm sorry. Because, you know what? Jaclyn Hill, she already tried that. She already tried to blame it on a lab, and she said she hired six scientists. We still ain't heard what those six scientists had to say. So don't be coming out and saying you blamed it on a lab. You should have learned from your good Judy Jaclyn Hill, okay? Uh, and why would James care? His Morphe palette contained unapproved colorants and is under FDA investigation. Does James believe he's above the law? There are reasons he might. James admitted to sexually soliciting underage boys, explicit conversations, sending nude photos of himself, and requesting nude photos of them. He posted a video apologizing to his victims and then deleted the video when he realized he had implicated himself in criminal acts. Have there been legal consequences for his predatorial, predatory actions? No. So, I guess he does believe that rules don't apply to him. My two cents. Hashtag my two cents. In the four years, this product has been in development, according to James. They couldn't figure out how to create these colors using eye-safe pigments. I'll be filing a complaint with... The, good for you. Good for you, Kevin James Bennett. I'll be filing a complaint with the FDA. Feel free to join me. It's a pretty easy process. Hashtag FDA. Hashtag James Charles Painted. Hashtag Painted Gate. Okay? It's interesting to me, though, that he puts down here, you know, all of this about why he thinks he's above the law. So I guess he doesn't believe that the rules apply to him. And yet, you all want to continue to ask me why I think that his friends should come out and stand on the right side. Or why I feel like Colleen Ballinger's friends should come out on the right side. James Charles would have had no launch party had nobody shown up to his launch party. Okay? Like, let's make that very, very clear. If not one makeup artist, if not one YouTuber if not one influencer had shown up to, to James Charles' launch party, he wouldn't have been posting pictures. It would have been his mom and his dad. And no, his brother wouldn't have been there. And we know that from his own word because he doesn't have a relationship with his brother because of the allegations. He said that in his Cosmopolitan article. Okay? So it would have been he, his mom, and his dad standing there. If none of these YouTubers, none of these friends would continue to support him in his problematic behavior. Now, people want to say, are you wanting him ruined for the rest of your life? I want James Charles to get some help. He threw out in this video or this article of Cosmopolitan that he had been in therapy and he had seen a counselor and things like that. James Charles, you want to redeem your reputation? Why don't you come out in a video and why don't you explain what you talked about in those therapy sessions, what you learned, how often you went, how long you went, what therapy assignments he had you do out, or her, she had you do outside of your therapy sessions. You know, if any diagnoses were given to you, if you feel free to share those things. If not, how about you just share what you've learned from that experience? 
But you want us to just assume that because time has gone by, you're changed and you're a different person. I'm a changed person. I'm so tired of people getting in, in uh, apology videos and saying, I don't know who that person was then. I'm not that person today. Without explaining the work that they did. Now, you, you want to say that I think that that's, Peter, I think that's a lot to ask of somebody. I talk every single time in my vlog about when I'm going to a therapy session. I got a therapy session tomorrow night. I got a couple session tomorrow night at 6 p.m. with my husband. Thursday, I had a, or Wednesday, I had a therapy session with my counselor. I actually did a video right after that talking about new updates of things that I've been learning about my OCD. I don't think that's a long request from somebody that is a self-proclaimed predator to come out in a video and explain the work that they've done on themselves other than going to Camp Coachella with their girlfriends. I don't think that's a lot to ask, okay? So if he wants a redemption and he wants to be uncanceled, why don't you come out and do the work, all right? And yes, I do think it is very telling that these people that go to his launch parties, that promote his makeup, promote all these kinds of things, that throw up his birthday parties, Daniel Prada, in his Instagram and think that that's funny, they make light of all of these issues. You are the people that are not helping James Charles grow. So when people want to come over to my videos and other people's videos and say that we are asking too much, that we are holding him too accountable, that we don't want him to be able to grow, no, it's not us, okay? We are the people that are begging James Charles to grow as a human being and take some accountability for his actions. His friends are the ones that are excusing and enabling those behaviors. It's on them, not us. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.